Welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today is all about meatloaf. Meatloaf is one of those things that for some reason people hate, and some people love, and people hate as a kid, but love as an adult. I love meatloaf. It's one of my favorite things to eat, but I don't even make it all that frequently. But we're going to make three different varieties today. We're going to make two that are kind of traditional, actually the recipe more or less out of my Wicked Good Food book, but with a couple little tweaks, and then we're gonna make a third one that's actually a bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. Should be really, really cool. But we're gonna get going by sauteing some onions. So I'm gonna grab an onion here, and cut off the stem end, leave the root end on like we always do. We'll go ahead and dice this. Now for meatloaf, I like my onions really fine. The deal with meatloaf is essentially it's, it's ground beef that's forced together with stuff, right? And if you have something that's a solid, like a hunk of onion that's way too big, it's not going to hold together really well. So we want our onions to give a lot of flavor and a little bit of texture, but we don't want them to get in the way of making our meatloaf fall apart. Same thing I would do if I were making a meat, meatball. A meatball and a meatloaf are essentially the same thing. In fact, a lot of times I'll make meatloaf and I'll take whatever extra meat I have and just make it in the balls and bake it in the oven or cook it in a pan. And then throw them in the freezer because they're great to have. My kids love meatballs. All right, so what we're looking to do here is we're actually going to use these same onions for all three meatloafs. All right. That looks great. So we're going to let that cook for a couple minutes. We're going to add some garlic, but the garlic's only going to go in two of our meatloaves. So we're going to let our onions cook a bit, pull some of the onions out, and then add garlic. So for the garlic, there's always this little brown dry end. I'm going to just cut that off, and then give the clove of garlic a little tap. Not super hard, because what we want to do is just crack it so that the skin will pop right off, and that worked perfect. Now this is kind of big and I don't want it to go everywhere, so I'm going to cut it in half. Then I'm going to put it in making sure the bolster, this fat part of my knife here, is actually off the cutting board. And I'm going to give it a good whack, like that, to start getting it smashed. And do the same thing here. And then I'm going to go through and just give it a quick chop. Mmm. You cannot beat the smell of onions cooking. I love it. <clears throat> give these a quick little stir. That looks great. So we're not looking at a ton of color on here. We just want to soften them a little bit. So we'll leave that be. And we'll start doing some of our other mise en place here. So I have some flat leaf parsley, which is going to be one of our ingredients. So I've already gone through and washed this. So I'm going to pull off. We don't need a ton of it. And I'm not worried about the stems. I don't want a huge piece of stem, but I just tear the leaves off. And usually what I'll do is I'll just bunch it up like this. And go through and slice it. And then go the other direction. And that looks, that looks good. So parsley doesn't have that much of a flavor. It has a parsley flavor, but it's pretty mild. It gives some good color, good contrast in color. All right, onions are looking great. So let's see. <clears throat> eggs, we're going to add eggs. So eggs play a really important role in our meatloaf. What they do is, you've all seen an egg cook. You throw it in a pan, it goes from a liquid to a solid. So as it goes from a liquid to a solid in the meatloaf, that's what's going to hold our meatloaf together. So I'm going to crack some eggs here. You can practice your one-handed uh, egg cracking if you want. And just to speed the process along, I'm going to beat them up a bit. I'm going to beat them relatively well. We are going to mix our meatloaf, but you don't want to mix your meatloaf forever. So if you can get your eggs, your egg whites and your egg yolks all mixed together, that's a good thing. Then to this, we're actually going to add milk. 
So milk is going to play a really important role in this as well. So milk is going to add moisture. Now I measured out our milk. I'm not sure exactly how much we need. If we find that the meatloaf is sticking to the bowl when we mix it, we can add a little more milk. But one of the reasons the moisture is important is because we're going to add something really dry. We're going to use saltine crackers for two of these meatloaves. So these are really dry and we want to hydrate those so that you don't end up with a super dry meatloaf. So that's where the milk is actually going to make our crackers a little bit moist. Now in traditional recipes what you'd actually do is take old bread and throw it in milk, let it soak up the milk and then you'd squeeze out the extra milk and then you'd throw in that soggy bread in. We're going to use a little different technique here. But we're just going to break these up. I'm going to break them up as I put them in. It doesn't really matter how fine they are if you don't care. So once again, you're making your own meatloaf. Make it something that you like. Let's take a look here. All right, so we're getting a little bit of browning on here. So I'm going to take and pull out a little bit of these onions to use in our other meatloaf. About like that. Then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add our garlic. Now garlic's one of those things you have to be really careful with. If you cook it too much, it'll get really bitter. But once it starts to get brown. So what I'm going to do is shut our heat off now and let just the residual heat that's in the pan, let that finish cooking. So I'm going to grab our meat. So I have two bowls of meat because I'm going to make two different batches of meatloaf here. I was going to make one big batch in a big bowl, but we didn't have any glass bowls and I wanted you to be able to see. But if I were making this at home, I would make a huge batch of meatloaf of like the base meat and then I'd separate it and do different things with it. So I'm going to add some of our parsley to each of them. And I'm going to go ahead and add our breadcrumbs to each of them. Well, in this case, cracker crumbs and break them up relatively well. And you see there's not an exact measurement here. What we're looking for is that when we're all done, the proportion of meat to bread is, you don't want it to look completely like bread, but meatloaf is one of those dishes too that's a great way to stretch your food dollar. Ground beef, ground meat in general is relatively inexpensive, but you can stretch that even more because it's still way more expensive than bread. So if you end up mixing it with bread, which is what we're doing here, and eggs which are generally, generally pretty inexpensive, you can take that pound of meatloaf, that pound of ground meat and make it into two pounds of meatloaf by the time you add everything else. All right, so we've got our crumbs in there. We're going to season them both with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Actually, no, we're only going to do this one with Worcestershire sauce. This other one, we're going to give a little squeeze of ketchup to. Since we have two different batches, why not? They're both going to get a little bit of time, just because I like the flavor of time. And I'm going to take our egg and uh, milk mixture and pour about half and half. Beautiful. So this is your chance to get dirty. <clears throat> These are absolutely the best tools you have in the kitchen. This has had a chance to cool off a little bit. You want to make sure that it gets at least to room temperature because you don't want to throw it in there and actually have your hot onions and garlic cook your meat at all. But for the sake of TV, I'm going to add these now. Do about half and half. Oh, it smells awesome. So before I get my hands in there and get them totally messy, I want to think about what's my next step going to be so I don't have to run around the kitchen and grab stuff. So one of my meatloaves is going to go free form onto a pan. Our other we're actually going to bake as like a pie. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hands in here and just start to mix. So the meat that I'm using here is actually a meatloaf mix that I got at the supermarket, but it's equal parts ground beef, ground veal, and ground pork. The beauty of that is, well, it's already done for you, but each of those three meats adds its own different character and different flavor. 
The texture's pretty much the same. But it makes a great meatloaf. It makes a great meatball as well. <clears throat> so when you're working in a little bowl like this, make sure you get to the bottom and kind of flip it over so that everything's well mixed. Now you could totally do this in a mixer. You could do this with a spoon if you wanted to, but I'm telling you, you'll be done three times as fast if you just use your hands. So this is our one with the ketchup in it. So this one with the ketchup, we're actually gonna make a little ketchup glaze that's gonna go on top. So that's why we put a little bit of the ketchup. This other one will be just a little bit more savory. So I used to work, a long time ago, I used to work at the United States Capitol actually as a tour guide. And I slept on the floor of my buddy's apartment. Um, and they both worked for different senators. And I, for whatever reason, I would end up making lunch for us for the whole week. And this is what I would do. I can remember one week that I made meatloaf. And we had it all five days of the week, but we had it in different ways. Sometimes we had it just as meatloaf. Sometimes we had it as um, the ketchup glaze one. I made a mushroom sauce, which we're going to make today. We would have it as sandwiches, and it's one of those things that I made one big batch and just let it be. All right, good. So what's gonna happen as this cooks is some of the fat's gonna come out of it. So I wanna make it relatively level, but I'm gonna put a little indentation in the middle because I wanna remove some of that fat off partway through the cooking. So we'll move this guy out of the way. And then here, this one's gonna be a free form. So I'm gonna dump it right on there and then use my hands just to shape it into the shape I want. And so you can make a big, fat, wide one. It doesn't matter how, it's, it's meatloaf. It doesn't matter how you make it. So I'm gonna make it a little longer. And you do want it to be about the same width all the way so that it takes about the same amount of time to cook. So we're gonna take our first break here. I'm gonna I cleaned myself up a little bit. Both of our first two meatloaves are in the oven. Now it's time to work on the third. So we're making a bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. So this one is just going to have beef, just ground beef. But we're gonna use our onions that we had before. Add our onions in there. And we are going to add breadcrumbs to this one. This is a really fine breadcrumb. It's a store-bought one. I like to use fresh ones when I have them, but I didn't. And we're gonna add milk like we did before. I'm gonna add it right on top of the breadcrumbs so that can absorb some of the moisture of the milk. We're gonna add two eggs that I have all beaten up. And we wanna hit it with some salt and pepper. And generous pinch of salt. Okay, so now at this point, we're gonna go ahead, like we did before, and mix this together real well, using our hands. Best tool you have in the kitchen by far. I wanna get it to pull together. So one of the things that's gonna be a little bit different about this one is that we're going to actually stuff this with cheese. So we're gonna put cheese on top, but we're also gonna put cheese on the inside. Oh, and I forgot, I wanted to add a little bit of ketchup to this as well just to give that little bit of that ketchup flavor, not too much, but it gives a nice acidity and a little bit of sweetness to it. So we'll mix this together. One thing you'll find when using the really fine breadcrumbs is that you're gonna need to either use a little less or just be aware you're gonna need a little more liquid because they do tend to get dry and they tend to bunch up. So you need to mix it really well. All right, that's just about all set. So for this, I'm only gonna put about half of our meat on our pan. Kind of make it about the shape I think we're gonna end up being. And then I'm gonna cheese it. So I have a really nice, really good quality cheddar cheese. Super sharp. That we're gonna lay right in the middle here, kind of like that. And then I have American cheese, which is not, I guess it's better qualities of American cheese, but this is pretty run-of-the-mill yellow American. 
but I love the way the American melts. So I'm gonna lay that in there. Now I'm gonna to top this off with more of our meatloaf mixture. I don't know if I'm gonna use it all, which is fine, because then we can make meatballs with it or make a little mini meatloaf. Yeah, that's about it. So now I'm gonna take it and shape it. So now we're loaded with cheese on the inside. Oh, that's perfect. All right, this will save, we'll make some meatballs out of it or we'll bake it in a little pan and make another little meatloaf. So the next thing we're going to do for this is we're gonna weave some bacon together. So I'll wipe off my hands and right here, I have bacon. I usually have bacon on this show. I don't know if you've noticed that. But we're gonna take and I'm gonna move this cheese out of the way. This has been contaminated with my raw, my raw beef hand, so I'm not gonna stick this on a cheese platter. We'll use it in our meatloaf. This is gonna end up going on top. But I'm gonna take a piece of bacon and kind of stretch it out and lay it down and put a row of them next to each other. So if you've taken basket weaving, I have my basket weaving merit badge from Boy Scouts. It's kind of like this. You're gonna lay all your pieces out. And so our goal here is that we're gonna weave together a mat of bacon, put it onto our meatloaf and then bake it like that. So oops, I think I have two slices here. Maybe not. And so what you're looking for is that you want the beginning part of your mat to be just about as wide as if you took a piece of bacon going the other way. So I think we're good. So now <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take and fold back every other piece. Just like that and lay my bacon on top. And then fold these over. And so that's the beginning of our, our little weave of bacon. All right, so now I'm gonna take and pull each one of those that was on the bottom back all the way. And then we get another piece of bacon that we lay in there. Then we bring these all back. And you can start to see the weave. I'll do one more for you. But So now the one that's on top, those are the ones I'm gonna pick up. Oh, and I can smell those other meatloaves, meatloafing in the oven, it smells awesome. All right, so I'm gonna drop this guy on there and bring these back. So what I'm going to do is we'll take another quick break. We'll come back, we're actually gonna to top this with ketchup, more American cheese, wrap it in the bacon, then pop it in the oven. See my mad skills here with bacon weaving? That's about the only thing I weave, but it's pretty cool when it's all done. I'm really happy with how that came out. Before I get my hands dirty again, we're gonna make a quick glaze that's gonna go on top of our meatloaf that's in the pie plate in there. So I have about a quarter of a cup or so, about half a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna add a little more than half a cup of ketchup and a little bit of cider vinegar. Maybe like two ounces or so of cider vinegar. To give it a little bit more acidity, just gonna beat this up a little bit. And then when I go to put our bacon cheeseburger meatloaf in the oven, I'm gonna glaze the other one. All right, so time to get dirty again. So I'm gonna add ketchup to the top of this meatloaf, about like that, and then use my hands and just kinda rub it around. And it's fine if it gets on the sides, and then at this point, I, like I said, I had this extra cheese, so I'm just gonna break it up and stick it on there. No real rhyme or reason to it. But then I do wanna cover the whole thing in American cheese. So this will hopefully get all melty and cover our whole meatloaf. Now comes the hard part, all right? So my goal here is, is I'm gonna take this whole meatloaf, 
put it on top of here, and then wrap it. So I'm going to use my silicone baking mat here and lift up the whole thing. Come right over here, fold it over on itself, whoops, and roll our meatloaf onto the bacon mat like that. So now I have what is the top of our meatloaf on the bottom. So now all I have to do is wrap around. And same thing here. Right? That's very exciting, just to throw it out there. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm going to take and roll the whole thing over onto my arm and slide it on here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's pretty exciting. I need to clean myself again. We'll come right back. We'll pop this guy in the oven. And we've got one sauce to make before we get Arthur up here. All right, so our beautiful bacon-wrapped meatloaf is in the oven. We're going to work on our sauce. So our sauce we're going to make is a pretty quick and simple mushroom sauce. We're going to start out with some shallots. This is a shallot. It's a member of the onion family. It's a little more mellow in flavor than onions, but they're fantastic. So what I'm going to do is take the shallot, which I already peeled, I'm going to make a couple little cuts into it like this. Maybe one more. And then I'm going to make some cuts straight up and down, being careful, just like in our onions, to not go through the core. And cut perpendicular to those. We get a beautiful diced shallot. So I have a couple ounces of butter in my pan here that I started to melt. We'll put that in there. I'm going to turn our heat up a bit. The other thing I did on break that I didn't show you is I put a pot on over here with some potatoes. We're going to make some mashed potatoes. How can you have meatloaf without mashed potatoes? So same thing. Make a couple little cuts, always making sure that your fingers are out of the way. Then our straight up and down cuts. I'm going right across again. And then those are going to go right in here. So we're going to let these sweat. So remember, sweating is we're not looking for any color. We just want to let some of the flavor come out of them. Now, mushrooms for our mushroom sauce. We're going to use these. These are cremini mushrooms. So they're a baby portabella. <clears throat> you might have heard that mushrooms are like sponges and they'll absorb water and they'll absorb a little water, but it's not that big of a deal. It's more important to clean your mushrooms really well. They grow in compost, so you can actually see how dark this water is. You can see some of the stuff floating around in there. So what I want to do is just give them a quick rinse. I threw them in there just for a moment. And as I go through, I'm going to take each one out and just cut them. Once again, give it a quick rinse, knock off any extra water. I would always do this with the whole mushroom. I wouldn't do it once it's cut because they will absorb some more moisture. <clears throat> And I'm not a huge mushroom fan. Like, I'll, I'll avoid them in a lot of things, but mushroom sauce on meatloaf is one of those things that I, I crave. I love it. Or mushroom sauce on french fries, or french fries with meatloaf and mushroom sauce. Now we're talking. It's looking pretty good. So now if I'm not going to use all these mushrooms, I, what I want to do is take them out of here, dry them off with a paper towel, and just keep them until you're going to need them again. But you only want to wash what you're going to use. We have a little bit of simmering happening here, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to add our mushrooms right to it. <clears throat> and we're going to let these mushrooms cook. What's going to happen is we're going to release a lot of moisture out of them. We're going to let some of that water evaporate so we get a real strong mushroom flavor. So these need to cook for, I don't know, three or four minutes. All right, so as you can see, our mushrooms have shrunken quite a bit because they're loaded with water. A lot of that water has evaporated. I turned our heat way down low, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start to make the roux, which is going to thicken our sauce. But because there's still a little water in there, we're going to use a little different technique than throwing it all in. We're going to sprinkle our flour on top because the fat will rise to the top. We mix it around a little bit. 
let it sit. We're going to sprinkle some more flour on top. And our goal here is to try to avoid making lumps. You don't want those little roux balls bouncing around your mouth. Now we want to let this roux cook for a solid five, seven minutes. We have meatloaf number one here. I took, it's more, it's about 75% baked. I just loaded it up with a layer of our ketchup, vinegar, and brown sugar. Before we put that back in the oven, we're going to take out meatloaf number two, <clears throat> which is our first kind of traditional one. And you can see this guy's done. I took a temperature reading and it was about 160 degrees, which is right where we want it to be. This is going to be awesome. So this guy can go back in. And I don't know if you can see in there, but our bacon meatloaf is looking awesome. I'm very excited about that. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a little bit of time to this. This is dry time. Remember, dry herbs are more powerful than fresh herbs. And we'll say that this is cooked enough. So I have chicken stock I'm going to add to this, and I'm going to pour it right in all at once. And I'm going to use my whisk and mix this around. So what we'll see is this will come to its final thickness as soon as it warms up all the way. So this is going to need a little twist of pepper. And you can see it's just starting to thicken now. Let me use a spoon and show you. But yeah, starting to get a little bit thick. So we'll take another break. We'll let this come up to a simmer. I'm going to adjust the seasoning with a little bit of salt and pepper if it needs it. And then we've just got to wait for our bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. And we're ready to see what Arthur thinks of what we created today. Great. Hi, Matt. Hey, Arthur. How are you? Good, good. What do we get today? Well, today. We made a little magic with your Hudson Appliance kitchen here. Meatloaf magic. Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Oh, that's my favorite. I know, that's what that's I heard. Definitely my favorite. So this is kind of a traditional one. Kind of sweet, ketchupy topping on top. Yeah. But we baked it in a pie pan, so you can serve it in slices like that. Okay. A little bit less mess. This guy here, also traditional, just about the same thing. <laughs> that's mine. Fed. That's mine after. Okay. Mushroom sauce, some nice mashed potatoes. This is the beauty. This is the beauty right here. So it's a bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. So it's all beef, loaded, stuffed with cheese on the inside. You can see some of it oozing yep. out there. American and cheddar cheese covered in ketchup, wrapped in bacon that we wove together. Wow. And just to show you one of the uses, we made this beautiful little uh, meatloaf sandwich here. Well, I tell you, this, I can't wait to dig into this. Let's do it. Okay, let's start with this one over okay. here. That is good, yeah, it really looks good. A little sweet on the top, and then oh. you get kind of the savoriness. Yep. savoriness. We'll go for this guy. Sure. Make sure you get some of your sauce there. So this one, a baked free form, oh. has a little more crust on the outside of it, where this one doesn't have that crunchiness. So kind of whatever you're going for. That's phenomenal. <clears throat> it really is. All right. Now, and this is like a. Least. Go ahead. There you go. Tastes like a cheeseburger? Mmm. Just like a cheeseburger. All right. Now that's wicked, wicked. good. 